Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on producing random numbers that follow the Poisson distribution using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, it's helpful for us to be able to produce random numbers that follow a specified distribution, particularly when demonstrating statistics. So if we wanted, for example, to demonstrate a Poisson regression analysis, it may be helpful to produce a random variable that contains values that follow a Poisson distribution. This is fairly straightforward to conduct in SPSS. You can see I have an ID variable and it has 100 values. And I configured the data this way so that I would produce 100 random numbers that follow the Poisson distribution go to transform compute variable I'm just going to call this RV1 for the target variable random variable 1 and we want the numeric expression to produce the Poisson distribution so we'll go to random numbers and we can see there's several functions here for producing random variables including the Poisson so it's RV dot Poisson and what we would supply as an argument, what we would supply this function is the mean. So I'll double click here, and I'm just going to supply the mean of 10. Then I'll click OK, and you can see it's produced the random numbers. And I'm going to do the same thing again, except I'm just going to change the target variable to RV2. And again, just the function and the mean will stay the same. It'll give me a second variable that should follow the Poisson distribution. I can test whether random variable 1 and random variable 2 follow the Poisson distribution by using a one sample Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. But first I want to go in and switch to the variable view and change these two variables to scale. And before I run the test, I'm also going to go to analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives. I'm going to move these two variables over. And on options, I just want to see the mean and the variance, just those two metrics. Hit continue, press OK. And notice that for random variable one, the mean and the variance are very close to one another. And that's the way we would expect it to be in a Poisson distribution. Now we know the mean should be close to 10 because we set it at 10. For random variable 2, however, you can see that we have a mean of just over 10, but the variance is only about 7.8. So now that we know this, let's test these variables and see if they indeed do follow the Poisson distribution. We'll go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Statistics, Legacy Dialogues, and then One Sample KS. So this is the default dialog for the One Sample Komogorov Smirnoff test. And I'm going to move over Random Variable 1 and Random Variable 2. Under Options, I'm just going to add Descriptives. But down here, where you can see test distribution in this frame, you can see by default, normal is checked off. You have the, the choice normal, uniform, Poisson, and exponential. I'm just interested in Poisson, so I'm going to uncheck normal and check off the Poisson distribution. Run the test by clicking OK. So you can see we have descriptive statistics and a table labeled one sample Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. I notice in the descriptive statistics we have the sample size, the mean, the standard deviation, and the minimum and the maximum, but the variance is not displayed. Of course we know the variance is the square of the standard deviation, but I've already computed it through descriptives up here just by selecting variance in that dialog. So to interpret the one sample KS test, 
uh, we have a lot of values here. Uh, the most extreme differences, of course, the mean, the sample size, and the actual Kolmogorov smirnov z statistic for random variable 1 and random variable 2. Uh, but of primary interest is going to be the p-value, which for random variable 1 is 1.0, and for random variable 2, 0.945. So we interpret these p-values by determining whether they indicate statistical significance or not. Of course, for random variable 1, we do not have statistical significance. And we do not have it for random variable 2 either. Both of these values are greater than 0 0.05. If these values were less than 0 0.05, we would say that they are statistically significant. And we would presume that the random numbers do not follow the Poisson distribution. However, since we have a non-statistically significant finding here for both of these variables, we would presume they are both following the Poisson distribution. I hope you found this video on producing random numbers that follow the Poisson distribution to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.